Just about every city in Indiana has one place to go in the community for a pretty good steak. In Lafayette, that place for a real good steak is Sarge Oak on Main. It's earned that reputation over several decades, as well as its notoriety. For coming on 50 years now, the place for steaks in Lafayette has been Sarge Oak on Main, 721 Main Street in downtown Lafayette. Mel Brutzman and his wife Grace Ann are its third owners, maintaining the high-quality legacy of its bountiful cuts of fillets, strips, and ribeyes. And in its decor, its colorfully checkered past, starting in 1936, when entrepreneur Roldo Guerra took over the struggling three-year-old Black Hawk Cafe and called it the Oak Tavern after its fetching oak bar, all of which he obtained the old-fashioned way. And Roldo Guerra won it in a poker game. Actually, Mr. Guerra had to settle an outstanding $200 debt to keep the bar in red velvet drapes and turn the Oak Tavern into a reliable watering hole and one of many downtown Lafayette establishments offering customers a wide range of backroom, above-the-law investment opportunities. Uh, such as poker and roulette and crafts. And um, it was all very friendly, word-of-mouth type of thing. As head of the Tippecanoe County Historical Society, Paul Woods has developed radio and television series revealing the shady side of Lafayette. With its lively Rivertown legacy, when speakeasies and distilleries flourished during Prohibition. It was called the wettest town on the Wabash. With gambling flourishing through the 40s, with the Oak Tavern charged for Roldo Guerra's attention to detail. Note the light bulb under the bar. When it flashed, it alerted the bartender. The boys in the back wanted another round of drinks. A corresponding red bulb in the back allowed the bartender to suggest to the boys, this would be a good time to take a stroll and get some air. We may be raided anytime soon, and there's a very convenient back door, and so they just went on out. Women had many reasons to look finally on Roldo gear, especially when their significant others succeeded in gambling away the weekly paycheck. If the wife came, he would give her back his earnings, but he was not allowed to gamble here again. It wasn't until the late 40s that Gear found it fiscally prudent for the Oak Tavern to offer solid sustenance. They didn't want to lose their clientele while they went someplace to eat, so they started serving food so they'd stay right there. And that's where this formidable gentleman came in, roaring in on his motorcycle from Ohio in the late 40s. A former professional wrestler named Sidney Sargent, who was particularly gifted in cutting and cooking steaks, and to whom Gear rented his kitchen for a dollar a day in 1947. So acclaimed were the steaks, Sidney and his wife Josephine opened the dining room next door as Sargent's Fine Food, and ultimately buying the Oak Tavern in 1962, running them as separate businesses to prove the restaurant could prosper separately from the bar. For Sargent was a man of high standards and strong opinions that rarely went unexpressed, especially as it applied to his steaks, which he first seared on a hot grill to establish a crusty top to lock in the juices, and then char grilled on the broiler from rare to medium and never beyond. If you want steak well done, he wouldn't cook it that way. You ordered your steak and Sarge brought it and you loved it. And that was the way it was. <laughs> In short, Sarge didn't embrace the concept the customer is always right, as one diner discovered upon insisting his steak be rendered well done. He took the, the grates off the grill, reached in and got three hot charcoals that were red hot, put them on the plate, and insisted the waitress take them out to him. He was right behind that waitress. When she set them down, he says, no, eat those damn things or get out of here. <laughs> but most customers enjoyed Sarge as much as his steaks as he greeted them in blood-stained apron, regaling them with rollicking stories about the animal trophies, the stoony in the dining room, and treating their kids like royalty except for those who adopted the hairstyles of the Woodstock generation. Indeed, Sarge would have given my recent guests, Chris and Phil Guernsey, a hard way to go. Chris for ordering her steak well done, and Phil for his flowing locks. When long-haired people come in, the waitress would try to, to go to the, uh, the kitchen and keep Sarge back. They'd do everything they could so he wouldn't come out, and they'd come out there invariably and see these, these long-haired guys from producing at the, at the table. And he'd go over to me and say, you just eat and shut up and leave, and don't be giving me any hard time. And <laughs> Sidney Sargent passed away in 1970 with the Brutzmans purchasing the operation 10 years later, expanding the menu a bit and customer diplomacy a lot, and guiding it through a dicey period of downtown economic decline and renewal, all the while staying focused on the Sidney Sargent beef legacy and Sarge Oak's lofty reputation as the place of Lafayette for steak. Sarge Oak on Main in downtown Lafayette is open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. And for the record, Grace Ann and Mel Brutzman will cook your steak the way you want them, even well done and they'll do it with a smile and without a snicker. Well, that's the Reed Duffy Chronicles for this edition. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join us next time. We'll keep you posted. Good night.